Hey guys, it's Nick from Retro Games HQ, and today oh, I'm interviewing the developer for Inlanders, Nick. And uh, why don't you tell us a little about a little bit about Inlanders? Hello, everyone. My name is Nick, and uh, I've been developing Inlanders for about two years, I think. It's kind of muddy because uh, when you're doing solo dev, you just drop the project sometimes, and then some other times you just grab it again. Uh, Inlanders is about uh, the um well story wise it has to do with a lot of little stories because on the game you travel to a lot of planets uh and every planet has its small theme and then there are the overall themes of the game which have to do with how you approach uh what is like considered life's meaning i know it's a little heavy subject but the game has two playable characters and each of them basically explore uh, the same universe that the game is set into and they approach things differently and uh, their dialogue is structured differently. That means that basically one player mostly asks why things are the way they are, uh, more of an existential overtone, while the other character is mostly focused on how can I use things around me. Like he wants to understand stuff around uh, them because uh, they want to uh, use it to the best of their interest. Um, my uh, inspirations have been many games uh, like Hyper Light Drifter, uh, Wizard of Legend, like a lot of indie games that use a more uh, stylized modern pixel art. And of course the, uh, the battle system is uh, reminiscent like pretty same with uh, Mega Man Battle Network and all the series on the uh, Game Boy that I used to play when I was like a kid or something. So yeah, that's like the uh, basic gist of it. Yeah, the one thing that drew me to it was the Mega Man Battle Network. Um, I've heard good things about Hyper. Was it Hyper Light Drifter? Um, so with the two characters, is it just something that uh, you pick or is it like story driven? Which one you're playing? Uh, it's a story. It's... It's an it's a weird state between being a story driven game because uh, right now because you know those things can change we're still in mid development mm -hmm. um, the way that dialogue works is that you don't have to actually follow it like you don't have to actually follow the story you can just uh, roam around kill monsters uh, pick up loot do your things and progress the game without reading too much into the story yeah. while at the same time if you decide to read into the story you might progress a little faster because the story leaves some hints regarding uh what to do and where to go next and like how to approach certain situations uh but even if you don't follow the story you will probably figure it out like it's not a very complicated uh game in terms of like progression and stuff it has like a few light puzzles that if you actually uh, see what the NPCs are saying and like try to place two and two together, you'll be like, oh, that's how the puzzle is solved. If you decide not to do that, then you will probably hit your head against a brick wall for like 15 minutes and be like, oh, that's how it's done. Mm. Um, so I guess there's a team or is it just you? Uh, I started uh, doing this solo dev, which is something I do not advise to anyone <laughs> because <laughs> solo is extremely hard. Um, but I'm still developing and programming everything myself, but the uh, pixel art is being handled by two other people. And also some other stuff like the music uh, and uh, the portraits that the game has uh, are being done by some friends. So I guess you started getting, um, pretty much there were starting to be difficulties regarding that stuff and you realized you needed other people. Uh, yeah, especially on the art department because I I, I don't know how to draw, like I'm not nearly close to an artist in a visual sense but i uh i tried i like i have some old pixel uh stuff and it's like embarrassing slash bad and uh i needed to find people because doing the art and also developing and programming at the same time was it demanded a lot of time so mm -hmm. i just found some people to do the pixel art and i'm just programming and developing the game all right well um I guess that's why you're going to be doing a Kickstarter soon to fund things like that that you're outsourcing. Uh, well, uh, the way that uh, we currently work is uh, I we're doing a revenue share split, 
Uh, I am from Greece, and in case uh, people don't know uh, the stuff that's going on in Greece, uh, it's very bad, like economically speaking, and I can barely have like enough to live by myself, so it's not like I can pay people. Like, we are very poor around here. So I needed to find people that were willing to do a revenue split, uh, like share all whatever income might come our way. I believe that's also more fair in terms of uh, working uh, on a project or anything. But also I had no other option. It's not like I can uh, pay someone for their services or something like that. The Kickstarter is needed because this game is... Uh, is big. It's not like it will probably be around 25 hours of game time. And if you want to do all of the content, like the hidden stuff that I have put and all of that, it will probably be around 30 something. So it's a game that requires at least another year or maybe two of development mm -hmm. uh, before it can be like in a good shape to be like, you know, a big game. Uh, that's the reason why we're doing a Kickstarter mostly because uh, we're trying to do something bigger. Uh, like I could probably have the game ready in like five to six months with a lot of debugging and some quality control, but it will have maybe two or three hours of content, and I really don't want that. Like I've spent so much time developing the story, the characters, the systems, how things are supposed to be going, the art style, the uh, sound effects. Like a lot of thought has gone into this project. And I was like, eh, I don't want to have like a small game or something. I want to go for something bigger. Right, which is understandable. You put so much time and effort into it and you want something to show for it. I mean, and 30 hours total is pretty respect, uh, respectful, especially since you were doing it solo dev for a little while, you know? And yep. uh, no, I mean, I understand. I never thought about the revenue share uh, way before of it. But um, actually... One thing I wanted to ask, we get back to the Kickstarter thing, is the 3 by 5 grid. I That's one thing I just remembered. The game also, while it has Mega Man Battle, Man, uh, Mega Man Battle Network system, it has a 3 by 5 grid, but it looks like the middle grid is neutral. Yeah, uh, the middle grid is accessible by both the enemies and the player. Uh, one thing that I didn't really like on the Mega Man Battle Network series is that... Uh, Melee combat is a little bit, I don't know how to put it, not in a very good spot. Like, you have a very few... Like, it's hard to get close enough to do melee, and the game doesn't reward you enough for it. Like, you have all those high-dealing uh, chip cards that do. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a ranged game. I like the melee aspect of Mega Man Battle Network, and this game has also some extra melee systems that have to do with me melee attacks. Mm -hmm. Uh which I could explain, I guess, but it's, like, more detailed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a neutral one where both enemies and players can step into. I have no mechanics that switch the battlefield in any way, like gain more space or lose space or something like that. I think that's, like, a very good balance of a 3 by 5 uh, I've played a lot, I've debugged it and stuff like that, and it feels like you can also get really quickly for a melee attack that is rewarding, and then you have enough space to breathe and go back and maybe do your ranged attacks with a little more safety, I guess. Right, so you still have room to move around even though it's a smaller grid. It's a 3x3, three three basically, and uh, I mean, yeah, you might get blocked on uh, on one or two, uh, uh, what's it called, squares? Yeah. But it doesn't really restrict your movement. You still have a lot of room to dodge things. Okay. So, uh, yeah, because that's one thing when I saw it I was most most interested in was the fact that it was a 3 by 5 grid and it looked like the middle one could be taken up. But, yeah, now I think about it, yeah, Mega Man Battle Network, I mean, you could hit melee attacks, but it definitely favored um, ranged attacks. Definitely, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I never thought about that aspect of it. And usually the, like, melee chips were pretty good, you know. Uh, yeah, they were hitting pretty heavy, but you didn't have like a lot of, uh, I don't know how to put it, it didn't give you much of an opportunity to use them, you had to be like, they were very situational. Yeah, you knew, you pretty much had to know the enemy was going to be there, you know, yeah. they were going to do that, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, but, um, oh yeah, going back, because I was thinking about, I, that popped up in my head, but going back to Kickstarter, uh, I know on the Reddit post that you put up, 
on the Mega Man Battle Network subreddit, people were asking about um, multiplayer. Uh, so why don't you tell the pretty much the answer that you gave them? Uh, yeah. Uh, regarding multiplayer, um, I hadn't taken that in consideration when developing this because multiplayer and networking is a huge like branch of game development that I don't know much about. And uh, it's definitely not doable solo. Like, I can't solo develop a multiplayer game because you need to set up servers, you need to do, like, a lot of stuff. Um, like, doing it on a couch level would be good, like, you know, local, but then um, you get other problems of knowing what's on your, uh, like, enemy's hand. Stuff like you can't really counteract because even if you do split screen, you still have all that information, which I don't think is, like, very approachable. Uh, about online, I am, I am willing to do it, and of course I would like to do it, but that's like on a Kickstarter level, because from that money from Kickstarter, if we, it's a stretch goal, not like the, uh, founding goal, uh, our stretch goals are basically, we will hire those people to do that work for us, so we can still focus on developing the game. So every stretch goal is something that is out of our area of expertise that will allow us to put something else in the game, like multiplayer, uh, doing an art book, and some other stuff like that. Okay, so I guess you all have uh, a few stretch goals for it. But uh, is there anything else about the Kickstarter? Or not the Kickstarter, really, because... Well, yeah, how far out is that? Because I think you said it was kind of uh, soon? or Yeah, it's soonish, you know. Uh, it should be around, uh, April, I think, uh, March, April, somewhere towards there. Uh, before we launch a Kickstarter, we were going to launch a demo for people to be able to play the game mm. so they can make up their minds if they want to support us or not, which comes out in around one month, maybe a little more, depending on a few things. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that, uh, the Kickstarter should be around then, but, uh, then again, the most difficult part of the Kickstarter is not like running on campaign and having enough content to show because right now, like uh, if I show you my uh, Kickstarter, like a uh, sketch, uh, whatever, and the uh, project page that's like hidden and mm -hmm. I'm still editing it, it's very, very big because we have a lot of stuff to show. Uh, the problem that I encountered that I didn't know about because I'm like new to this field or whatever is that you have to advertise it a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you have to uh, like build a huge audience before you go into Kickstarter and I didn't know that. Um, I thought the site favored like new creations and stuff like that or things that seem interesting but most of the uh, people that have done Kickstarter that I've talked to said that you need to have a huge audience. and. That's one of the reasons it's pushed back. Otherwise, it would be up, like, right now. Right, yeah. I've seen um, Kickstars that fail that the, the games look amazing. It's just that they didn't advertise enough. Uh, and that's yeah. really what it is. You have to have an audience. And you have to advertise. And, yeah, what happens is I think we see a few projects that just go from zero to, you know, 2,000% funded. And they don't have a following. But that's not the norm, sadly, on Kickstarter. Um, yeah. Is there... Um, so, the game's more melee-based. Uh, what else about the game? Because it's obviously, like, a, a passion for you. Like, you, to do this, especially to start off trying to do it solo dev, you have to have a passion for it. You can't just feel kind of neutral about it. So, is there anything, like, unique takes that you are excited to show or have in the game uh, compared to other games or other games that were your inspiration? Um, one, uh, uh, one of the combat mechanics is that instead of uh, pausing the game to draw cards, they are drawn for you every two seconds. So you're in the field, like you're in battle, you can't, you, you can't pause, of course, but it's like not uh, the optimal way, I guess. Hmm. And while playing, the cards are drawn and you need to quickly think what you're going to do. It adds a lot more, uh, I guess, it's a lot more tense because you're drawing your cards while playing and at the same time there are some other systems, depending on the character, that uh, reward you for playing the cards correctly because uh, every there are like two card types for each uh, character. 
and they work differently. One works with a combo-based system where you use cards to build up combo points and then you use a finisher attack to deal damage based on how much combo points you have. And the other character is more of a balancing scheme where some cards fill up your uh, th this chem tank that they have. And uh, at the same time, if it goes too much or if it becomes empty, it might explode, something else might happen. So you have to like keep a balance between not overdoing it with those type of cards and, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, it's a very distinct game style for both of them because uh, for the one character named Cosmos, uh, which is the one that we've showed mostly on uh, teasers and stuff like that, uh, they are more developed as a character. Uh, you need to like hold some cards and then uh, think where you're gonna uh, like uh, use them so you can have the maximum damage and then use a finisher so you can deal a lot of damage because otherwise if you just like spam cards that come into your hand like situationally you probably are not going to succeed like the uh, enemies are tough Mm -hmm. And unless you do combos or, like, think a little bit, it's probably going to end badly for you. Mm. Well, I mean, I like the idea of... It sounds like you could have faster-paced battles than in, uh, say, Mega Man Battle Network, since it's just spitting yeah, yeah. cards at you. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I definitely ha it definitely will have a different feeling. I'll, I think I'll like it just because I like games that are, you know, it's pretty much like, get good. You know, there is no easy... The way out of it, you know? It isn't just spam stuff, like you were saying. Yeah, no, you can't do that, because uh, you might get an attack that is extremely situational, and you can't really use it uh, that moment, because it's like, it's like really bad on its own. So you either have to think through how you're going to build your deck, so when that card comes, you know that you're going to be using it properly. Hmm. Because, like... I have cards that are melee range and only affect one square and they do a lot of damage, but at the same time they're melee and they affect one square. So you need to have cards that will push the enemy there in front of you or you can teleport really fast to them. Something like that that won't stop you from drawing that card and be like, oh, this is useless to me. Right. Uh, there are a lot of cards for both characters, uh, like a lot of attacks, and there are also other systems to that change combat. But I think the main... Um, aspect of uh, the uh, battle system is that you don't just use good cards uh, and you don't cobble them before battle, you combo them while you're in battle. You have to think what you're doing while you're in battle. Right. Uh, well, talking about the battle system, you also have an overworld. Uh, yes. How, how, now, you're saying it's going to be actually fairly big. Um is there so you was you said there was worlds that you have to travel between? Yeah. Um basically uh there are a uh, few levels for each character be, which are different planets that have different schemes, different color palettes, different everything basically. Hmm. And uh, the enemies also interact differently on each level because they have different mechanics in place. Uh, I can only say for the first planet, because uh, I don't want to spoil too much for the other stuff, but on the first planet, the enemies attack each other while on combat uh, to gain uh, beneficial bonuses for themselves. So they're like sort of cannibalizing, I guess, each mm -hmm. other, so they can be more powerful. And that's something that you need to have in mind, because um, you, can, uh, you can ignore an enemy that uh, is like very simple i guess and doesn't do a lot of damage but at the same time it's a feeding bag for a more powerful enemy that might uh, cannibalize it like two or three times and then be extremely overpowered and you have to like be careful of that you can't ignore something in battle um so that's just yeah, the hmm? that's just the battle mechanic for one planet there's different battle yeah, mechanics yeah, yeah, for one planet okay that's well they're not uh, they're not extremely complicated because uh, we don't want players to every time like have to write stuff down or anything. But it is different on each planet. Okay, that that's actually pretty cool. Uh, keeps it fresh yeah. instead of just repetitive. But um... yeah, and the the attacks change, the enemies change a lot. A lot yeah. of like stuff happens. But and you said that the characters have like different, pretty much moves. So oh, it's yeah, going... yeah, like completely unique. Well, some oh. of them are common, you know, like very basic attacks. Like, yeah. 
uh, sword slash those squares, but most of them are very different. Oh, okay. Man, that man, I actually really like that because one thing I liked about Mega Man Battle Network was the um, the souls, double soul, and stuff like that. So that kind of yeah, makes yeah, it yeah. feel even more distinct. Yeah, that was uh, uh, one of my favorite systems as well. So um, with the other games besides Mega Man Battle Network, how did they inspire it? Like, what elements is in your game or will be in your game that uh, are from them that you think you you know maybe made better or more unique? Um, well, to be honest, uh, I, like, in terms of combat, I'm not sure, uh, our game can be very, very good, uh, because, well, at the same time, it's a fast-paced combat and it has a few, uh, new elements. Uh, with game developing in general, when you introduce new concepts, sometimes they don't sit well with a player, and... I, there are two paths when you can take when creating a medium, uh, at least in my view, which is either take something that works and just know what makes it work and make it perfect. Mm -hmm. And like take something that is very standard and perfect that, or you can try new paths. I've chosen to do the latter, uh, which is uh, create new things, uh, try some other stuff, which in turn I hope can... Uh, inspire some other people to try those systems as well. I'm not sure. Uh, because, uh, truth be told, while I played a lot of Mega Man Battle Network and the other games that feature grid-based combat, like uh, One Step from Eden mostly because uh, the other ones are still like in production, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what makes this combat really good. Like I, I'll admit that. I don't know what is it that makes this combat feel nice and good. I just know that I like it a lot and that I can introduce new concepts to it. Right. No, um, I, hmm? no, I think I understand what you're talking about because, I mean, if I had to say what the essential I don't know, goodness or what makes the battle grid system so good, I, I maybe it's the fast-pacedness, uh, fast-paced uh, setting. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. It's just, it is just fun, you know? Um, it's one of those things that uh, I could play for hours. Yeah. But um, but with the overworld, multiple worlds, um, I guess it's a futuristic setting, or um, the correct term that I've been using lately is anachronistic, which means that it combines uh, elements from different ages and settings. Because, um, for example, the first world that the players will interact with. Uh, the one that uh, we've shown mostly in our uh, whatever, or posts and stuff like that, is actually quite primitive. It's like some rock golem type creatures that have like a lot of corals sprawling out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so you couldn't call that futuristic. You can call it alien, but not futuristic. And then some other worlds are very, very weird. Uh, for example, one of the worlds is um, an ice field, basically, that has uh, our sort of armored archangels that carry weapons like uh modern day weapons like machine guns and bullets grenades stuff like that i tried to take different themes and combine them and create something that most people wouldn't expect yeah. uh hmm? yeah no you would not expect like archangels with machine guns that's definitely oh, you know. <laughs> and it's like a little striking because you can create a lot of new visual language with that and a lot of like new uh interesting concepts um yeah that that's what uh, i've tried doing mostly like with the art direction i also have some other unique concepts that i don't really want to go into right now mm -hmm. because uh i don't want to like uh, spoil everything regarding the game because we have like some very very weird concepts in there about the other planets but, uh, yeah, I guess if people stay tuned, they will find out. Right, yeah, definitely don't spoil all that. But yeah. um, if you had to make a short, like, pitch for your game, like, what what would do you think, like, the, essentially would be the case for why people, especially people that love, like, Mega Man Battle Network and that grid system, bat, the grid, grid battle system, why do you think that they should 
ch at least check out your game or play the demo or uh, check out the Kickstarter when it comes up, which I will have linked in the description below. Uh, so if people want to go follow it. Um, well, I'm not really good at pitching stuff. I'll just say that <laughs> right <laughs> open. Um, I guess uh, you could say if uh, you want to play that grid system, but with new mechanics that not even mods from Mega Man Battle Network have introduced, then I guess you should try our game. It's the battle system, but with more modern approaches to game design, I guess. You will find systems that are, you will, un like the players will understand that, oh, this is more modern. This is like the direction that the game industry is going right now. And it's like taking some elements from there uh, that have made games the last few years more intense and more uh, thinking while you're playing instead of like uh, uh, on the back of your head on like uh, before you start something uh, and combining them with uh, this uh, combat system. But besides the battle, uh, we have, I think, some interesting mechanics in place that I haven't found uh, somewhere else, like on other games or maybe just like on, on a smaller scale. Um, we have tried to emphasize exploration of the planets, and the way we've done that is that the characters are able to... Okay, quick side note, but mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid and I used to play games, one of my favorite things was trying to break the game, you know? <laughs> like, try to glitch into a weird place and, like, see those weird geometries and, like, the non-polished stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I will enjoy doing that. Uh, and I think a lot of people do that as well, like... After you've played the game, you just kind of want to break it and see how it really is. Or just for the sake of it, you know, break it. And I've taken that, like, both visual and uh, feeling of breaking the game and put it into the game. So the characters are able to glitch through things. So oh. they will go into places that are, like, not finished and under construction, in quotes. Like, because I've made them be under construction. Like, they're not literally not finished. It's just, like... Uh, weird assets or like uh, stuff glitching or something is broken there might be collisions where you don't expect things like that but they're part of the game now mm -hmm. like they're not the uh breaking part of the game it's the part of the game that's pretty interesting but this is supposed to be set in a real world and not in a virtual setting it's just it's like a fourth wall kind of glitch in the game you know right uh, i guess you could say that i I uh, I don't know how to put it, but... Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. That's pretty interesting to try to work that kind of stuff into the game itself. You know, make it a feature yeah. and not a bug. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a feature, not a bug. And we've spent a lot of time... Uh, well, actually, I've spent a lot of time developing this system so it feels like you're actually breaking the game and not just, like, you know, glitching and passing through an object. Sometimes you really feel... You will really feel that oh, shit, I've done something, you know? Where mm -hmm. am I? What is this place? Why is, ev why is every collision not working? Why is my character lagging and stuff like that? But it's part of the game. You just don't know it yet. That's like how it's structured at some level, not on every level, because a lot of the game, you just uh, go through it normally, encounter enemies, attack them, blah, blah, blah. But after a while, some levels might get weird. As, uh, as you're progressing the game, things will start getting weirder. I don't want to say too much again. Right. Right. Well, is there anything else you want to say about your game or about the Kickstarter uh, or anything like that before we end it? Which, this has been a pretty fun interview, you know. Uh, the game's pretty interesting. I, I'm definitely going to be playing the demo when it comes out. And uh, probably, depending on the tiers, uh, finding the Kickstarter. Because I want to see more back, uh, Mega Man Battle Network games, you know, or inspired games. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I don't really know what I would like mostly to say is that if uh, anyone uh, is trying to like make a game uh, be patient that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> uh, about the kickstarter wait for it I guess in a few months it's gonna be here and uh, I don't know nothing else right and the the demo is going to be coming out, and you said about a month, right? Uh, about a month, give or take, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. 
Uh, it's playable right now, like I could upload the demo right now, but, you know, I need to have something of quality to show to people, not just a demo. Right, right. Well, uh, whenever I see that demo come out, I'm definitely going to share it in uh, multiple places, because this is a game I definitely want to see succeed, you know? Right. Especially Thanks since a lot, you... it means a lot. I mean, you're welcome. I mean, since really, I, I do want to get it up because the it seems like I like the concept of the battle system and increasing uh, the importance of melee. You know, having more situational moves in the game where you actually have to think about it more. But yeah, yeah I. Hmm? What? Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no! I wasn't gonna say anything. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, if that's all, then I guess we can end here, but for people watching, make sure you go to the description below where you can check out the Kickstarter uh, link, and you have a Steam page already, right? Uh, no, the Steam page is going to be up in a few days slash weeks because mm -hmm. there have been some problems uh, with Steam for some reason, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> well, Steam, yeah, Steam is weird but uh all right then i'm gonna put the kickstarter link in the description below where people can go follow it and uh if you all follow me on twitter i'll be tweeting out the demo when it comes out because i'll be paying attention to this project <laughs> but thanks for being willing being willing to do this interview uh so quickly yeah thanks no problem i and really enjoyed it actually yeah it's actually been a fun interview you know uh anyways i guess that's all and um yeah uh, thanks for being on here, and uh, hopefully we get to talk, uh, get to talk again when it comes closer to the game coming out. Yep. All right. See ya. See ya.